Are you a woman in your 30s or older? If so, levels of your hormone estrogen are already declining, which means the collagen in your skin is breaking down too. Enter phytoestrogens. In this video, we're going to talk about how leveraging these special plant compounds can have a regenerative effect on your skin. In some cases, even reversing some of that collagen loss. We're going to cover food and supplements and skincare. And as ever, this is all backed by science. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel, we talk about how to eat for great skin because true skincare starts on your plate. If you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button because it really helps the channel. So why are we even talking about this? Now, not everyone knows that the hormone estrogen or estrogen, if you're in the UK, has an enormous impact on your skin. In fact, your skin cells have special receptors for estrogen. And when there's enough of this hormone in your circulation, it docks onto these receptors, making your skin look younger, healthier, and feel more attractive. And this is largely because amongst other roles, estrogen is responsible for upholding the all important collagen in your skin. The problem is, as we women advance in years, our estrogen levels naturally decline. They start going down in our early 30s and by the time we get to menopause, they're really bottoming out. And unfortunately, our skin shows it. Low estrogen is associated with wrinkles and dryness and poor barrier function and poor wound healing and generally looking and feeling a bit haggard. In fact, some research suggest that in the first five years after menopause, women lose a staggering 30% of the collagen in their skin, all because of this drop in estrogen. So what does this have to do with phytoestrogens? Now phytoestrogens are special plant compounds. They're antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, but they're also unique in that when they get in or on your body, they act a little bit like estrogen. These compounds can lightly dock onto those estrogen receptors in your skin, giving your skin cells a much needed boost. In fact, research shows that phytoestrogens can boost collagen production, boost hyaluronic acid production, and as antioxidants, they're actually more potent than the better known vitamin C and vitamin E. In the words of skin scientists from the peer-reviewed research, phytoestrogens can significantly delay skin aging. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds good to me. Now, there are lots of different types of phytoestrogens, but in terms of skin health, the most researched ones are the isoflavonones, including daisine, genistein, and ecgol, lignans, and also resveratrol. Now, I wish these had snappier names, I'm sorry, but they don't. Emerging research suggests that we can leverage these compounds in food, in supplements, and in skincare to make our skin look better. So let's look at all three, starting with food. The first thing to know is that phytoestrogens are found naturally in a whole range of plant foods. In fact, it's kind of impossible to avoid them entirely, but you can intentionally increase your intake of phytoestrogens by including certain foods. Now, the first food type is soy. This is things like your edamame beans, your miso paste, and your traditionally prepared tofu. These are the best sources of the isoflavonoids daisine and genistein. And some people can even turn daisine into equal in their guts. It kind of depends on the bacteria you have in there. And equal is even more potent, which we'll come on to. Now, I know some people have concerns about eating soy, but I have two things to say on that. Firstly, you'll notice I've listed the minimally processed forms of soy, your edamame beans, your miso paste, and your traditionally prepared tofu. You want to focus on those and not the soy lattes or the soy-based meat substitutes. And secondly, a recent scientific review concluded that the clinical and epidemiological data indicate that adding soy foods or phytoestrogens to the diet can contribute to the health of postmenopausal women. So if this is you and you're especially concerned about your skin going south, then adding in some of these natural soy products a few times a week can be a really good habit to get into. A typical serving of tofu will give you about eight milligrams of isoflavonoids, which is well below the range considered to be safe. The next food to eat is flaxseed, which is a really rich source of the phytoestrogens lignans. In fact, just one serving of flaxseed will give you a whopping 163 milligrams of lignans, which is certainly enough to have an effect if you eat it consistently. And two other good things about flaxseed are firstly, it's rich in fiber. So when you eat it, it boosts your good bacteria, which in turn help you to use phytoestrogens more effectively. So it becomes kind of like a virtuous circle. And secondly, flaxseeds are rich in fatty acids, which have a skin boosting effect independent of their phytoestrogen function. I talk a little bit more about that in this video if you'd like to check that out. But basically, flaxseeds are a really good choice for your skin. Aim for one to two tablespoons 
grains of heaped ground flaxseed daily. It's really easy to stir into porridge or soups or just sprinkle on salads. The last phytoestrogen rich food we'll talk about is peanuts. Now these are a good source of resveratrol, which is one of the better known and most researched phytoestrogens. Now I know what you're thinking. Doesn't red wine contain resveratrol? Yes. It does. But the issue with that is that while resveratrol could enhance your skin, alcohol is very definitely detrimental to your skin. So you're kind of giving with one hand and taking with the other. And the other issue is that resveratrol has quite low bioavailability, which means it's difficult for your body to absorb and use. That means you'd have to drink about five glasses of wine to get a meaningful dose of resveratrol. And for the record, I'm definitely not recommending you do that. For the same reason, it's difficult to get a truly meaningful dose of resveratrol from peanuts alone either. But the difference is they can certainly contribute to your overall phytoestrogen intake with much less of a downside than wine. So aim for a couple of handfuls of peanuts daily or eat a couple of tablespoons of whole and natural peanut butter. This leads us nicely onto supplements. Now consistently eating natural soy products, flaxseed, peanuts and maybe the odd glass of red wine is going to help your skin. But say your menopausal or your estrogen levels are really low then supplements are one way to up the ante. And clinical trials have demonstrated some pretty impressive results with Equal specifically. Now remember Equal is the isoflavonoid that some people can make in their guts and some people can't. And when researchers gave Equal supplements to postmenopausal women, none of whom could make Equal in their guts, their skin significantly improved. In fact, after 12 weeks, their skin was more hydrated, they had better barrier function and they had less noticeable crow's feet wrinkles. But the fascinating thing is that this doesn't just work in postmenopausal women. Another study looking at men in the 30s to 50s found that taking Equal supplements led to improved hydration, fewer wrinkles and a more even skin tone. And the good thing about Equal is that it's pretty potent. You don't need to take much to see an effect. Literally 10 milligrams a day is enough. Now resveratrol is also showing promise in supplement form. In one trial, women in their 30s to 70s took resveratrol along with collagen in a supplement. After 12 weeks they had smaller pores, a more even skin tone and less noticeable wrinkles. Now obviously it's difficult to say to what degree this effect was down to the resveratrol and to what degree it was down to the collagen in the supplement. But it kind of doesn't matter because the exact supplement they took in the trial is available commercially so you can try it for yourself. I will pop some supplement details in the video description box below but as ever please be safe with this. Not every supplement is suitable for every person. So remember that this advice is not personalized to you and check in with your doctor before you start any new supplements. Moving on to phytoestrogens in skincare. Now this is just beginning to become a thing, but I have a feeling it's going to be huge. We have several clinical trials using our favorites, resveratrol and Equal, in skincare in varying concentrations. In these studies, using resveratrol in concentrations of one to 2% in skincare led to improvements in smoothness, firmness, skin skin tone, wrinkles, radiance and pore size, with some women achieving an 80% improvement from their starting point. And in another trial, skincare with 0.3% Equal led to a 78% improvement in all these concerns as well. And in another trial using another type of isoflavonoid in skincare, women saw their wrinkles reduced by 22%, which is an effect comparable to retinol. And obviously while retinol can be quite irritating, phytoestrogens appear to be very gentle on the skin. Now that's a lot of data, but what it's saying is that phytoestrogens are showing a lot of promise in skincare, particularly for women who are peri or postmenopausal. And one brand who is getting behind this is Paula's Choice. They have a phytoestrogen renewal elasticity serum, which uses Equal plus other isoflavonoids. Now, I haven't used this myself because I'm not yet menopausal, so I'm not the best candidate for it, but I do know people who have used this and who've been pretty impressed. I think the one bit of feedback is that the smell isn't necessarily for everyone. In terms of resveratrol, a popular product is this one, SkinCeuticals Resveratrol BE Night Serum. The upside of this one is that a lot of people do find it enhances radiance, as shown in those clinical trials. But the downside is it's pretty expensive. A more cost-effective alternative is Face Theory's Reserva F Antioxidant Serum. Again, I have heard good things about this, but I am a little bit surprised to see that it uses 5% resveratrol, which is much higher than the research range. So try it, but perhaps proceed with caution. Let me know in the 
comments below if you use any of these products or if there are any other phytoestrogen skincare products that you would recommend. I would love to hear about them. So to sum up, phytoestrogens can have a regenerative effect on your skin. They can support collagen levels, especially if you're menopausal or postmenopausal. Maximize phytoestrogens in your diet through eating minimally processed soy foods, flaxseed, peanuts, and maybe the old glass of red wine. You can also supplement with resveratrol and equal and other isoflavonoids, and you can increasingly find these compounds in skincare too. That was a lot of information, so I hope you found it interesting. If you did, you might like another video I've done on five anti-aging supplements that actually work, which you can find here. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I will see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare. Thank you for watching.